Well, hello. My name is Scotty, or at least that's what I want people to call me on the interwebs. Don't ask any questions. You know what one of my favorite things was in the early 2010s? It was definitely the monthly favorites videos that YouTubers used to do where they would round up their favorite things, whatever that may be, of a specific month, whether that was skincare, books, foods, household products, etc. I guess because I was highly suggestible, also very nosy, and I wanted to know what people were into because I was open to trying things. Anyway, I low-key love that. And I don't really see people I don't really see many people doing that anymore. Maybe they are doing it and I'm just living under a rock and I don't really watch YouTube that much besides video essays and commentaries these days and not so much in the niche that I'm actually in. But yeah, I haven't seen it and I'm not that interesting. So I don't really wanna share my monthly favorites every month because I'm usually just doing the same thing every month. I don't really try new things unless I absolutely need to. At least for the year, it might be interesting. And I put up a poll on the community tab and a lot of people did vote for that. And, and so I'm gonna do it. Show you guys my favorite things. So the first category is skincare. Now I get complimented on my skin. You're beautiful. A lot, which is kind of creepy if you think about it. This is the skin of a killer, Bill. Being 30, I think a lot about my skincare because I don't want wrinkles. And um, you know, as women, we're pressured to not age as much as you know. When a guy ages, it's like, oh, he's daddy. He's silver fox. But when a woman ages, it's like, oof. You just can't wait for me to die, can you? So I've been very much been influenced by that. And this year has been a huge struggle when it comes to my skincare because I have developed some random allergies to very common ingredients. It's been, it's been hard. <laughs> I don't really know how to deal with it. I should really go to a dermatologist or a doctor because I mentioned this in my 5K special. I have been struggling with my eyes and it's gotten worse in the last couple months. It hasn't, it got better and then it got worse. One thing that I figured out is that it might be tied to hyaluronic acid. I don't know if that's the cause, but it's definitely perpetuating the issue and makes my skin extra itchy. And hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid is in a lot of anti-aging products, even some foundations and it's it's usually the selling point it's like made with hyaluronic acid because it is protects against wrinkles and helps reduce fine lines and all that jargon and blah 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 so previously this probably would have been on my favorites when it comes to moisturizers because i have very dry skin and it is the derma e hydrating night cream now when i was showing the bottle you might notice that it has hyaluronic acid so unfortunately i have had to stop using this even though it is super moisturizing and made my skin so soft if you don't have an allergy to hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid it's a fantastic night cream i even would sometimes use it during the day when i wasn't wearing makeup it is pretty heavy but super moisturizing i'm so sad that i can't use it anymore because when i do my face my eyes get itchy and i don't even put it on my eyes i was using a night eye cream for that but it just i can't so let me show you guys what i've been using instead of this and it is this moisturizing cream by Curel. It's intensive moisture, so it's very moisturizing and it's also for sensitive skin. It doesn't have any, it doesn't have any scent. It kind of smells like gold bond foot cream a little bit, or like, you know what, like when you get the, the rash cream, that's what it smells like. Very medicated smelling. The only downside that, okay, let's talk pros and cons. Pros, it is incredibly moisturizing, makes my skin super soft. It really helps, especially this time of year where my skin is just like, Moisturize me. Because it's cold, even though it's not that cold here. My skin gets super dry in the winter. The downside is that this is such a tiny little bottle and I just got this and look how, Bruh. look how much I've used. This is like $23, which for me is pretty expensive. At least with the Derma E one, it's around the same price. I think it's like between 19 and $23, depending on if it's on sale, but it's two ounces as opposed to 1.4 ounces. And this will last me months. But just in a matter of like a week or two, I have used up more than half of this jar. So that's fun. So I will be looking for an alternative to this that is just as sensitive to my skin and doesn't make me make my skin burn and my 
eyes itch, but also is effective for my dry skin. Now, a couple things that I have used to help with that is this Damascus Rose Face Oil by Badger. And what I like about this is it has rosehip seed oil, which I used to use all the time. And I feel like has helped my skin stay plump and plush and not have any lines. But this has other things in it as well, which I think even though I'm including this, this is a more recent acquisition and I do love it, but I will be switching back to just straight rosehip seed oil after I finish this. But I just wanted to mention it because it is super moisturizing and makes my skin super soft. I like to put this on after the actual moisturizer, which you're supposed to do. You moisturize first and then you lock in the moisture with a face oil. And then for like the really dry patches, I've used the Beauty Balm, which is by the same brand. It also smells really nice, herbalicious, very rosy as well. Now, I try not to use this near my eyes and the other one as well I just mostly use it like around here because it does have like the rose oil like the different essential oils in it which does not do well around this area like if it gets too close to my eyes it does irritate it again in times past I could put anything on my face and it was fine but lately if I so much as look at my face wrong it freaking burns now what I have been using around my eyes which I don't even know if I'm supposed to it is like super thick and has a lot of moisturizing stuff like she butter and what's the other thing can't I can't read it's too bright in here but I've been using this I know it's like super bright hold on and this is by a small business, a woman owned, POC owned business. And I actually got this from my sister-in-law when I was in New York and she got this from her friend, which runs the business. So I'll link her Instagram in the description below, but it's this like moisturizing stick and it is super duper thick. So I'll usually get like melt it with my fingers and like put it around my eye, like not directly on my eyelid. I have like a medicated cream for that, which I got specifically for eyelids that doesn't have hyaluronic acid, but I'll put it like up here because I get dryness up here as well because the irritation like moves up. It's really weird. And then finally in like the beauty department, I did want to shout out my hair dye because I get questions endlessly about what hair dye I use. And eventually I might do like an actual video of me refreshing my hair color. If that's something you're interested in, please let me know. But it is these two colors from Sally Beauty and I mix this with 20 volume developer. And the reason why I use two different colors is because I'm very picky when it comes to my red. I like it to be slightly coppery, but not too coppery. So a little bit of like berry red, but also not fire engine red. It's really hard to describe, but there's like a very specific shade of red that I go for. And with these two colors, I feel like I have perfectly, I, I did it. I figured it out and I've been trying for years to to achieve it and I finally I finally did it. So this is the Ion Permanent Cream Hair Color, Color Brilliant. There's a lot of text on here, but basically it's the intense red with the medium intense red blonde. And the I believe the medium intense, the blonde one is the one that's like super coppery and then the intense red is the one that's like super cherry red. And with their powers combined, it makes the perfect shade of auburn red hair, which I don't know if you can really tell in this light. It looks kind of brown in the viewfinder. But. And then sometimes if I want it to be really like pop, I will do a bleach bath first on my hair to like strip old color because you get like color buildup after a while, especially since my, my, my roots are like light brown, dirty blonde. So I, if I want like a really good, even bright, intense red, I'll do like a bleach bath on my mids and ends and then do a very brief bleach bath on everything else. Very brief. Watch some Brad Mondo videos. You'll, or at, for, or, you know, just, ah, professionals. I got advice from a professional before I did this. I am not a professional of anything. I did want to include some fashion-y favorites, but I already did my, my top thrift finds of the year. If you wanna see my favorites when it comes to thrifting, it's gonna be in that video. But I do wanna highlight some small businesses that I love. First of all, these are like my favorite earrings that I bought this year. They're just these really cool sword earrings and these are handmade. They are by, hold on, I'm really bad at remembering names. Thistle Thistle. They've also done a lot of really cool metal pieces. They have recreated like that Victorian hand belt and I want one so bad ever since I modeled one for a vintage shop, but they sell out pretty, pretty dang quick. So I haven't gotten my hands on one and they're kind of expensive and I, <laughs> I need to stop spending so much dang money, man. I, you, you guys have seen. 
Another piece that I absolutely love, and I didn't think it, I was gonna get so much use out of it, but I've gone to so many Ren Fairs this year, is this leaf pouch that goes on your belt by Leafling Bags. This was a gift from her and I absolutely loved it. I thought I was just gonna use it for one look, which was like my forest fairy look, but I ended up wearing it to several Ren Fairs this year because it was just so convenient because the pouch is big enough for my phone, my lipstick, my chapstick, and then like a small wallet and then any like extra hairpins I need. All of my just necessities are just super accessible to grab because I still end up bringing a backpack or a purse to run fairs because I always need to bring a lot of stuff with me. I don't know if I've covered this in another video, but I have social anxiety, so there's like specific things that I need to have on hand at all times, like earbuds, gum, mints, hand sanitizer, like specific things that I need for like coping mechanisms. I need to have a bag, but like I don't need to grab those things constantly. So like when I was going to the run fair, but just had my backpack purse and constantly having to take it off, it was, it was over overwhelming me, especially since it was really crowded and I didn't like that. I just constantly felt like I was going to drop stuff. So having a bag right there and being able to just put my stuff away and get it out. I need to become a fanny pack person. Oh. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by my own clumsiness. I need to become a fanny pack person. A few more things that I don't have on hand to show you guys. I did promise recipes, but I can't really think of anything that like recipe wise is my favorite. That's like super interesting because I'm pretty boring, but I will shout out my favorite coffee creamers because I'm a typical millennial. And I'm obsessed with caffeine intake and I love me some coffee. I'm also severely lactose intolerant. So these are dairy free. First is the silk creme brulee almond creamer oh, it's so freaking good especially if you get hazelnut coffee the cheap stuff is best i always get the cheap stuff and then around fall time i always stock up on i think it's also by silk it's the pumpkin spice creamer so delicious. Editing Scotty here. So I just wanted to interject really quickly because I completely forgot about a very important favorite of mine in 2022. And that is that I got a new camera back in June. So I actually rented the Canon R6 in May for my trip to New York. I was supposed to go on a photography retreat. Unfortunately, the retreat didn't work out. I will link the video where I explain it, but I still had to go on the trip because I had non-refundable plane tickets. So I just ended up visiting family and I utilized the camera and lo and behold, I fell in love with it. So I just wanted to highlight the Canon R6. And I started off just using it for photography paired with my other favorite, my, my Sigma Art 35 millimeter lens. But then I decided to give it a try with my videos and I previously was a little bit scared to use it because I had heard that the R6 has an overheating issue with regard to video. However, they did do a firmware update and I think the issue has been resolved. I haven't really had any overheating issues and I've definitely recorded over 20 minutes. I think the issue was like around the 20 to 30 minute mark. The reason why I love this camera is because it is so versatile. It's great for video, it's great for photos, and it also has a wide range of lighting situations that you can shoot in. You can actually go up very, very high on the ISO and it won't compromise the quality of the video or the photos. Whereas with my previous camera that I use for photography, if you went over 600 ISO, you would end up with a grainy mess. And I also didn't use that camera for video because it didn't have a flippable viewfinder screen. Whereas with the Canon R6, it does have that flippable viewfinder and um, it's very, very useful. Now, the camera that I had previously used for my YouTube videos was my Sony, I think it's the A6100. And I still love that camera. It's a great vlog camera, but when it comes to sit down, more talky talky videos, I definitely prefer the R6 because the autofocus is way better. I'm sure my OG subscribers will probably remember me struggling with the autofocus and it focusing on my face after I show off the detail of um, an item that I'm showing. But with the Canon R6, I don't have that issue. It's pretty quick to autofocus on your face. And also the video quality is amazing as well as the depth of field when paired with the, the Sigma art lens, which I actually used to use that with my other camera. Since the R6 camera is now mirrorless, I did have to get an adapter, but it performs very well with the adapter so I can still use my favorite lens. I, I really love that lens and it served me very well. It pretty much stays on on my camera all the time. Um, yeah, interjection complete. And then my last but not least, my all-time favorite right now is therapy. <gasps> 
So I started going to therapy last year, but like this is like my first full year of therapy and it has changed my life. I freaking love my therapist. She has helped me so much in my journey of dealing with trauma, dealing with my ADHD. I don't know. It's so it's so weird when you're a girl with like ADHD because it presents itself so differently than in males and the testing is so geared toward young boys rather than girls and women. So I was very much like imposter syndrome mindset thinking that I didn't have it even though I struggled with focus, task regulation, dopamine, yeah, and sticking to stuff long term and not just letting the novelty of things just wear off and then like dropping it like it's a hot potato, like I did with my art. Anyways, so that has been great. There are other things that we're currently working on. I'm not going to speak too much on because, I mean, I do eventually want to speak on it because I think it's really important to destigmatize therapy and mental illness and traumas, but this is not really the place to do that. This is more of a happy, happy place. I do want to note that in 2023, I do have the goal of starting another channel separate from my art and my like thrift the fashion -y channel. I want to have a more serious channel where we can talk about more serious topics like mental health, critical thinking skills, navigating through life, maybe some commentary, like things of that nature. I really want to talk about that and I put it off for a really long time because I didn't really feel qualified. Again, that imposter syndrome, feeling like I am dumb because sometimes I have a really hard time expressing my thoughts out loud and not sounding like a complete buffoon. So my goal is to actually get over my fear and do that because I get I got over my fear and I did this and I stuck to it for over a year so I have demonstrated to myself that I can do this and I can get over my fears because previously I could not talk to a camera I didn't even go by a script with these videos by the way guys this is me just flying off the handle but for this other channel I do want to work on researching scripting and really putting a lot of thought and care into the videos it won't be as frequently like as frequently of an uploaded channel as this one I really want it to be like maybe once a month or once every other month and really put a lot of care into those videos and talk about things that I am passionate about besides just clothes. Not that clothes are bad. Like we love them here. We're all about that here. If that's something that you guys are interested in, I'm really happy for you to be excited and I am excited. You can let me know that you're excited down below. Suggestions for channel names would be very, very great. I'm still kind of workshopping ideas. It'll be also be nice because I'll be able to appeal to a broader audience besides just fashion oriented people. It'll be kind of scary though because then I'll get like, probably get more trolls. But you know what? You gotta put yourself out there sometimes, I guess. Anyway, I'm rambling, so I need to shut up. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm really excited to see what the next year has in store for us as a community. And thank you guys so much for being part of my journey and being supportive of me. And yeah, I love you guys so freaking much. You have no idea. Let's do this, 2023. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.